Hey everyone. So today I thought it would be a good opportunity to spend some time and look at my main trading account and show you which um, companies I'm invested in, which stocks I've purchased and a brief overview of some of the funds I'm also invested in. Um, and you know, just to do a comparison to, to how it's progressed over time and how it progressed over 2020 as well. So just to kind of look back at performance and look at some, some of the new companies I've invested in recently. So without further ado, let's jump in and have a look. All right, so here's the front screen of my stocks and shares ISA with Hargreaves Lansdowne. And you can see the total value is £30,916.16. Let's just jump in and have a look at some of the stocks. So obviously I will cover over some of my personal details. Um, but that's just, as I said, my personal details. Don't worry about that. Um, what's more important is the list of stocks and their values. Um, so actually, let's start at the bottom and work our way up. I think that makes a lot more logical sense. Um, well... <laughs> I don't know, it does to me anyway. So let's start at the bottom and Tesla. Um, so I own 12 stocks and price in pence. God, that confused me for a moment. Uh, that's their price in pence in GBP. So 800 and something dollar range at the moment. And um, value is 7,321 pounds. Cost basis 971. And, you know, that's a really fantastic return, as you can tell. Gained uh, £6,349 to date. It was actually a bit higher than that a few weeks ago. And obviously stocks fluctuate, so it will go up and down. And percentage, 653% up. Um, it's actually higher than that. Um, so 10 of the stocks um, were pre-split. So I bought two Tesla stock in 2018, 20, yeah, end of, end of 2018. Um, they did a five to one stock in 2020. So I was given 10 stocks for my two. Um, and the percentage gain for those is actually more like 1,400%. Um, immediately after the stock split, I bought two more um, Tesla shares. Um, so that's why the percentage increase has dropped to 653% because it's an average of the two. So, you know, it, it is accurate, but for the vast majority of those shares that I own in Tesla, um, they're actually, as I said, 1,400% um, up. Um, so next stock, Supply at Me Capital. Um, this is a, a total guess. I, you know, I'm not particularly confident about this. I'm actually part of a, a Facebook group in the UK um one of the guys that started that facebook group um is very invested and very confident about this company to me it was just a, a shot in the dark somewhere to park some you know a, a little bit of money for a while and um you know see see what happens um i've kind of been very close to just selling out of this position because i don't really spend much time researching this company i have very little interest in them um and i probably should just sell out of it but there is a lot of talk about them and a lot of potential. Um, so I own 71,000 shares, which cost me £440. Its current value is £377. It's actually minus 14% down. So it's about £63 down. N not much else to say about, about uh, Supply at Me, really. Um, I don't particularly have much interest in them, so... I'm just going to leave it there, see what happens. If I see any significant return, I will just sell out of the position and, and move it to another company that I know much more about. And next company, Square. So I own 18 shares, price in pence, value is £3,025, um, cost basis was £965, and percentage gain 213 percent so i've gained 2059 pounds so 213 percent gain you know really excellent result one company that i strongly believe in kicking myself a little bit for not buying more than the 18 shares um but it's easy with hindsight isn't it we can't just get hung up too much on what you should have done in the past it's what you did 
Um, what you're going to do in the future is more important. You know, there's no point looking back saying, oh, I should have bought more of them or I should have sold them. What well, doesn't matter, meaningless. I've, I've got 18 shares. I've earned myself 2,000 pounds. I'm 213% up, you know, a great result. You know, learn from it, move on, find the next opportunity. Um, actually, Square, um, you know, they, they've done really well recently. They bought a huge position in, in Bitcoin um, and their, their revenue growth is, you know, exceptional, just growing their, their, their revenue in their business really, really strongly. Um, so definitely no interest in selling out of my position in Square for the near future. You know, I can see them being a $300 um, stock in the in the very near future. They're kind of trading around the $200 to $230 range recently, been fluctu fluctuating up and down. So yeah, very happy with my position in Square at the moment. No, no intention of selling. Um, then we've got a group of um, funds, mutual funds. Um, so Morgan Stanley Global Brands. Um, let's just have a look at that for a moment and it will make more sense why I'm invested in them. So um, you know, they're a fund. Actually, let's just go back one second and review my position. So um, value is £4,460. Um, cost me £3,984. So I've gained 476 and it's nearly 12% up. So 12% up on, um, you know, I've been in that fund for about a year and a half, 18 months. And so we're just going to look at the, the fact sheet for this fund to get some insight into why I bought into them. So first of all, Morgan Stanley Mutual Funds, um, there's no initial charge to invest into them and there's no dealing charge from uh, my broker when investing in them. You know, that's a small consideration. Some um, charge a 2% or 5% um, initial investment fee. And then ongoing charges 0.9%, which is kind of in the sort of middle level of what a fund would charge for ongoing costs. Um, you know, some are as low as 0.5%, some are as high as 1.5%. So 0.9 is kind of in the middle. Um, and this is really what I wanted to show everyone. You know, this the reason I invest in mutual funds is just to diversify my um, holdings across different business sectors you know the companies that I invest in directly are generally biotech or fintech stocks you know Tesla I see is complete a, a, they're a fintech play you know they're although they're making cars they're really making computers on wheels um, Square a fintech and the other two companies that I talk about um, at the top of my um, list of, of investments are both biotech companies also I'm quite heavily invested in another biotech company, not with this broker that I won't share today, um, but I'm very focused around biotech and fintech. So just to d diversify away from that, um, I like to invest into mutual funds in different business sectors that still would give me a nice return. You know, 12% in JP Morgan over a year is is perfectly acceptable. You know, it's not it's not as, as much as some of the mutual funds that we've seen in 2020, but 12% is okay for me. Um, you know, and the, these are the companies they're invested in. So you recognize some of these names, Microsoft, Visa, Procter & Gamble, SAP, Baxter, you know, although they, these are, you know, science and uh, kind of biotech related, but the majority of their holdings are um, non-biotech, other um, business sectors. So really that, that's why I invest in them. Um, and, and they're doing okay. They're just ticking over nicely. Linsel Train, similar. Um, situations so you know I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket and go with Morgan Stanley and their global brands fund so some is in Lintel Train global equity so 1932 pounds cost me 1711 gained 221 pounds you know 12% very similar story 12% up um, and let's just look at the fact sheet and I'll show you the top 10s you know very similar situation 0% fees uh, no dealing charge, uh, sorry, 0% initial charge. I wish it was 0% fees. Um, and this one is 0.65% fees. Uh, so net on, and you get a, a saving because I'm on the um, Hargreaves Lansdowne uh, brokerage account. So uh, net ongoing charge is 0.5%. So, you know, still middle ground. Now looking at the top 10, you know, very 
non-biotech, very non-fintech, you know, Nintendo, Diageo, Unilever, Heineken, Disney, PayPal, Intuit, you know, although Intuit is kind of fintech, but it's just one of them. I suppose PayPal is arguably fintech as well, but um, I suppose they're more financial services, these two, rather than than fintech. Um, But the majority of their holdings are, you know, in other business sectors. So that's why I, I do that. And then last but not least of those funds is Fundsmith Equity. So I had £1,407. This is actually 25% up. It was doing much better than that up until recently. It was more like 30, 35% up, but it doesn't matter. Um, Gain £285. So, you know, it's just, it's, it's not making me rich, but it's a nice place to park some money that just, you know, increases over time. And, you know, it, it, it's a good move to di- diversify, device, diversify away from my main um, investment strategy. So just having a look at their situation, very similar. And net ongoing charge, 0.95% is actually quite high. Um, but the top 10, Microsoft, Facebook, Novo, Philip Morris, you know, non-biotech, all those, you know, as, as similar to the previous one, there's a couple that could be considered fintech or financial services. Um, so there we go. Um, and then we get to the more interesting companies that I've um, invested in very recently. Um, let's start at the top because Bean Therapeutics, I've already mentioned in a previous video, look in the card on the top corner um, and you can click and, and see the video where I explain why I'm invested in uh, Bean Therapeutics. I recently moved um, s- um, some investment out of CRISPR Cas9 based um, stock companies like CRISPR Therapeutics, Intellia, Editas, moved to Bean Therapeutics. Um, so I actually really don't have that much invested and need to start buying more and moving some of my capital into Beam. Um, so current value, £831, cost me £661. We are 25% up on my investment in Beam Therapeutics. Um, since mid-December, late December, I started to buy Beam Therapeutics, so very, very recently. Um, and another company that I've never mentioned on this channel that I believe has a really, really good opportunity in the next two, three years. This is kind of, it's not a short term opportunity. You know, it's not going to um, result in significant um, gains in 2020, but then onwards, 2021, 2022, when they really start to ramp up their revenue and ramp up the usage of their products, I believe this company has got a long way um, a big opportunity ahead of it and, and it really could be a, um, you know now could really be a good time to start back in this company and buy stock um, and see really significant returns um, so bio nano genomics so 256 shares um, price in pence uh, value is currently 1550 cost me 548 pounds so I've gained a thousand pounds I bought bio nano on the 31st of December. So what's that? Uh, 20 days ago, 21, uh, 19 days ago. Um, so I am up 182% um, so far. And I will keep buying. I, I can see by the end of 2020, maybe Q1, Q2, 2021, um, these will be a $20 um, stock for me. You know, they're, they're currently um around the eight dollar dollars they've increased from um i bought them uh, for two dollars and 76 cents i believe on the 31st of december um so you know they've been below three dollars for a long time um i should also mention there's a lot of risk associated with this company so they're in the genomic space they've developed a new way um using optical systems um which isn't too different to some of their competitors, but they're really focused on going after um, a smaller niche area of genomics, which is really rare genetic diseases or parts of the genome that requires very long reads that uh, companies like PacBio in in, uh, currently are, you know, gaining a lot of ground, a lot of momentum in. Without going into too many technical details, they've essentially come up with a new product that 
optically maps the, a human genome and allows them to identify rare undiagnosed genetic diseases. It's taken them a lot of um, effort to get to this stage. You know, they were actually at risk of, of completely going into receivership and going bankrupt. They were in, at risk of being um, delisted from the NASDAQ because they were, um, they were not generating enough revenue. Um, I think that is all behind them now. They've, they've started to generate enough revenue and their stock price is high enough to maintain their position on the NASDAQ. And I really feel like it's a bright future for, for BioNano. So, you know, maybe I'll do another video on them very soon um, and we can talk about BioNano in, in detail, a lot more detail about the science behind it and the sort of business opportunity in front of them over the next few years. So... Yeah, there we go. That's that's my entire portfolio. So you can also see down the bottom here my total performance. Um, so value of stocks or funds that I'm investing in is 20,897. Um, gained 10,404. And sorry, the other way around. This is my cost base is 10,404. So I've gained 10,493. Uh, pounds, which is a little over 100% gain. Um, you know, a significant proportion of that gain is from Tesla, um, but you know, I'm not complaining. You know, it's it's still been a really great result. You know, really great result from Square over 200% and nearly 200% from from Bio Nano and going upwards as well. I would say, um, and you can also see up here that I have just over £10,000 in cash ready to invest. Um, this is actually from a recent sale of my old house. We moved into a new house very recently um, and this was the difference between the two mortgages. So I'm going to move that into some mutual funds, um, potentially one of these three, potentially some others. We, you know, Perhaps we can do another video on that separately and, and look at how I I, um, how I uh, identify which mutual funds to invest in and decide where to move my money and what criteria I base my decisions on. So yeah, look out for that in the future. But for now, you can see that's it. That That's my total value invested in Hargreaves and Lansdowne. Um, you know, I, I this is something that I'm really interested in, finding new companies like BioNano and Beam and Tesla and, and Square and, you know, doing a lot of research, keeping on top of their developments and their potential and investing in them and, you know, growing my portfolio. So, you know, I, I really enjoy this aspect of investing. So thanks for watching. I hope you found that interesting and maybe learned something along the way. It was a really quick whiz through my stock portfolio, investment portfolio with uh, Hargreaves and Lansdowne. Um, you know, just wanted to fly through it, at, you know, as super quick and just really at a high level overview, um, you know, we can dive into it a bit more deeper in the future, if that would be of interest to you. So let me know in the comments, you know, if you have any questions or concerns or anything you wanted to, to mention, um, give me a like. It's really important that any of you that are viewing the video, give me a like, really helps grow my channel and you know gives me the uh, incentive and impetus to keep making videos so hit the like button subscribe comment share do all the youtube things and we will see you very soon bye